At the beginning of Legally Blonde, Emmett, Emmett Forrest, uh, has graduated from Harvard Law and he is working his way up in the ranks of uh, Professor Callahan's law firm, uh, Stidwell, Zuskowski, Fox, and Callahan. <laughs> and uh, he has been working his whole life basically to get to this point and he is waiting for the day that Callahan turns to him and says, here is the carrot, you are a full-fledged partner. And so he's um, basically Callahan's go-to boy. What drives Emmett? Emmett is driven by his need to prove everybody wrong. He needs to prove to everybody that he uh, is not uh, where he came from and that he can uh, run with the big boys. And of course, all of this changes when he meets Elle Woods, and hence the musical. When we were looking at the film, we watched it obsessively and talked about what we could amplify, what we could take away, what we wanted to, you know, pick and choose what we wanted to, to include. Um, really, for me, Emmett was the biggest opportunity because. God love Luke Wilson, but he pretty much sat on a bench and drove a car and they were madly in love. The stage Emmett is different from the movie Emmett in that I think he has a clearer history. Um, you know where he's coming from. He's more of her friend in the stage version than he is um, a kind of a mentor figure to her in the movie. We took Emmett and we made him a scrappier guy. In the movie, he's sort of a, a, just a guy. I'm not sure where he's from or what his background is. In ours, we made it very clear that he was from the slums of Boston. He'd grown up with uh, his mom and a series of bums, and that he had worked like a dog to get through college, and he worked three, two jobs in addition to class, and that he had a complex about achievement and about authority. Uh, it takes place at Harvard, but and yes, she does win a court case, and yes, she does become a lawyer, but it's really not about that. Um, and the way to tell that story on stage was to look at the character of Emmett and find out when does he meet her, how does he fall for her, how do they support each other, and why does she fall in love with this guy who's sort of been in the background the whole time and then suddenly she turns and looks at him and goes, oh, you. When Jerry Mitchell came up to me and talked to me about doing the workshop of Legally Blonde. He it was in the stairwell at the Schubert after a performance of Spamalot. And he said, I, I, I want you to do the reading of Legally Blonde. And I was flattered and excited and like, well, of course. I fell madly in love with Christian. And I just went up to him and I said, you know, I'm working on a show and I've got a part for you. And I said, you want me to play the weird guy in the circle that Elle Woods kind of rescues. You remember that character who was kind of like, I don't know, he was a Vulcan or something. And he said, no, I want you to, to play Emmett. And it, I thought he was kidding. It's more interesting and it's more satisfying in, to, to everyone sitting in the seats that she doesn't fall for another JFK lookalike. That she actually falls for someone with integrity who treats her with respect. If that's a message for young guys in the audience who are watching, if you want the hot blonde chick, treat her with respect and you might get her too. I think a lot of men are going to really connect with Christian. And, and the character of Emmett and relate to him and also live vicariously that <laughs> I can get a girl like L Lorabel Bundy and Elle Woods. I don't consider myself a romantic hero type in this business. And I hope this, this uh, part changes that perception. Because why does every leading man have to be, you know, barrel chested and have a chin? Isn't there room for the chinless men?